Well, good morning, everyone. Have you ever been in a conversation, maybe with a, a coworker or a friend, and some point while you're talking, it becomes really obvious that the other person isn't listening? Like sometimes they're, they're subtle with it, like they might just glance away every now and then. Other times they're really obvious, like maybe they pull out their phone and they start scrolling and you think, hmm, I've lost them. This has happened to you, right? You can tell the other person is not listening. But let's be honest, we all do this. I do this. My, my husband and I, in an effort to stay connected and try to stay healthy, we try to walk together every day. And when we walk, we talk and we catch up about what's been going on in our lives. And this is what happens pretty regularly. My husband will be talking about his day and he'll share something that triggers a thought in my head. And that thought leads to another thought, leads to another thought, leads to another thought. Before you know it, I'm over here thinking about that thing He's still over here talking about this thing. And at some point, he'll look over at me and say, are you even listening to me? Well, I was. <laughs> I'm just not anymore. If we have trouble listening to one another as human beings who can see and hear one another, are we surprised that we have trouble hearing God speak to us, right? We struggle to listen to the human beings in our lives. It's even harder to listen to the humans. Now, most of us, if not all of us, want to hear God speak. And we'd like to know that it's God speaking. If, if you called my phone right now, now my ringer's off, because I'm up here. But if you called my phone on a regular day, um, the ringer that would go off would be the, the theme song from Peanuts, you know, Linus and Lucy, the little jazzy piano bit. But if you're one of my kids or one of their partners, it's gonna be the, the Harry Potter theme song. So that I know, gosh, that's, that's a, this is like a, an important cause. This is one of, my, one of my kids, one of their partners. They, they need me. And if my husband calls me, He's got his own ringer. It's gonna be kung fu fighting. <laughs> because I know that's an urgent call. Don't you wish it was that way with God? That it was that obvious? Don't you wish he had like his own ringtone so that when you heard something in your head or in your heart, you could just be sure it was God speaking to you? I know I wish that. I mean, I think we all would like it to be really obvious. This is God speaking to me. Now, some of us, if not all of us, might have experienced feeling like God is silent. And that can be really hard because if we've been asking God to speak and listening for God speaking and we don't hear, it can really discourage us. It can even make us doubt our faith. So whether you hear from God regularly or you've never heard from God at all, this message today is for you. I believe God can speak to us. We see examples in the Bible and all throughout history of God speaking. The question is, are we listening? God has many different ways he can speak, but none is more foundational than through his word. Let's see what God has to say to us today. Let's take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. So we're going to have it on the screen. If you have your Bible app or you want to read it in your paper Bible, it's all good, and we've got it here for you, and I'm going to read it to you. I have many years of reading um, stories to my kids at night, so I'm going to use my best storytelling voice for you today. So, verse 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. 
There were not many visions. Maybe that's how it feels like to you right now. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? (laughs) But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and he laid down. Again, the Lord said, called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? My son, Eli said. This reminds me of when my kids would get up in the middle of the night 25 times. Do you remember this? Um, I did not call you. (laughs) Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Oh, verse, yeah, verse six. Again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and said to Eli, here I am. I called you my son. I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Verse seven. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. He didn't yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me? Then... Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you can speak. And we thank you that we can hear you. But Lord, we ask that you would help us. Help us to listen. Help us to hear from you. Help us to know that it's you speaking. Lord, Speak through me today. Speak through your word. Speak to our hearts and our minds that we might know what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hearing from God begins with the belief that he speaks. Okay? Hearing from God begins with believing that he speaks. We have to have that belief or we're never going to hear from him. Eli knew God could speak. He had experienced hearing from God. So he passed that belief on to Samuel. God does speak. He has something to say to you and to me. And we do have the ability to hear him. Samuel could hear him before he even knew who he was. Isn't that amazing? In the Bible, we see God speak in powerful, miraculous ways through a burning bush, through a donkey that talks, through a dove coming down from the clouds in the sky, through angels. Now, we also see God speak in like more subtle ways in the Bible, through things like people's dreams, or through other people speaking directly, or again, through his word. God speaks to Jesus through Old Testament passages when he's tempted in the desert. That sometimes, sometimes the only way we hear God speak is when we read the Bible. That is still God speaking to us. That That's him talking to us when we read this. So let's start with the belief that God can speak to us. It's possible. I'm even going to say that it's possible that God has been speaking to you for days, weeks, maybe even years 
through your circumstances, through other people in your life, or through his word. God spoke out loud to Samuel, but Samuel didn't recognize his voice. He's more familiar with Eli's voice. So when he hears someone speaking, he just assumes, well, that's got to be Eli. We all have voices that we're more familiar with. We're used to listening to them. The messages we hear and listen to will come from whomever and wherever we listen most. Right? The people we're used to hearing, those are the voices that we're most familiar with. Now, a few weeks ago, I received a text from a well-meaning, kind person. They were writing to me with some advice about a, a very important decision that I needed to make regarding my mother's health care. They sent me a screenshot of a shocking quote that made it really clear what decision they thought I should make. Now, as I looked at this screenshot, it didn't have the, the author listed of this quote. And if this was true, I mean, this was going to be very important for me to know in this decision. So I wanted more information. You know, I wanted to be able to research this a bit more. So I asked the person, what was the source? Because there was no source listed. Facebook. Now, I, I enjoy Facebook for, like, catching up with my, my former students or staying in touch with my extended family, but it's not the place that I would recommend doing serious medical research. We all have places we're used to listening. We need to, if we want to hear from God, if we want to hear God speak, we need to pay attention to who we pay attention to. Right? Pay attention to what you pay attention to. What are the voices that are you're giving the most weight to in your life? When we regularly read God's word, we regularly give God the opportunity to speak to us. We're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 6 through 17. It's way back in here. Okay. It tells us all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture is God breathed, it's practical and it's helpful. Through it, God teaches us how we can best live our lives. He uses it to speak to us and to prepare us for his work. But how could the Bible be written by humans and also be from God? Right? That's a pretty fair question. I've wondered the same thing. Well, Second Peter tells us this. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So the message in the Bible originates with God. But he spoke his thoughts to the human author. Then the writer uses their personality and style to communicate the message for God. So now, calling the Bible a book, it isn't exactly accurate. The Bible is actually 66 different books written by 40 different authors, most of whom never knew one another, from different cultures and from three different continents. What's really amazing, though, is that the Bible has a consistent message throughout, even with all those different authors. 
It's the story of how God relates to humans. And all of it points to the person of Jesus. That's incredible. All those different perspectives coming together. That's how we know it's from God, even though it's written by humans. Now, for many years of my life, I never heard God speak. And still to this day, I've never heard an audible voice like Samuel. Yet I believe that nowadays that God speaks to me in some small way almost every day. Almost every day. And I know that's not everyone's experience. That, has, that was not always mine. As I've grown in my relationship with, with Christ, I believe I can hear him. I regularly read his word to seek his voice. And maybe you are too. Maybe you want to hear from God more than anything. I want to hear God's voice above all others. So I try to read his word every day. Now, I've had to change some habits in my life to, to make this happen. Um, does anyone use their phone as their alarm clock? Like, I used to use my phone as my alarm clock, and so my phone would be by my bed, my alarm would go off, I'd grab my phone, turn off the alarm, and what do I notice? Oh, I have a message. I'm just going to read that message real quick. Now, my Bible is sitting by the bed, too, and my desire and habit is to read it every morning. But, you know, I had to turn off my alarm clock. Phone is in my hand. I have a message. I'll read that message. When I'm done, oh, I, sh I also I have a few emails. Let me just read these emails real quick. So I read those emails. In one of those emails, there's a link to a website. So I click, click on that link. And I go to that website. That website leads me to another website. That website leads me to YouTube. Before you know it, it's been 30 minutes. I have no time left to read my Bible. I got to move on with my day. And I tell myself, I will read it later. I will read my Bible later, but right now I got to get going because I am running late. Well, before I know it, it's time for bed. And I haven't read my Bible yet. And now I'm a little too tired. So I think I'll read it in the morning. So I go to sleep. And in the morning... My alarm goes off, yes, and the whole stupid cycle happens all over again. And I realized that this was keeping me from hearing from God. So I did something that might seem a little silly to you, but I keep my phone in the bathroom. Where I am not, and I, and I bought an alarm clock. They still make them, <laughs> I didn't know if you knew that. But I bought an alarm clock. Because, you know what? I don't want something coming between me and my ability to hear God speak. I take that really seriously. I also use, uh, I don't, so I keep my Bible by my bed, and I tell myself that's the first thing I'm going to grab, and I'm going to read that before I do anything else. It's just a commitment I've made, and sometimes it means I have to read it like this in bed. But, you know, whatever has to happen to, to read that first. That's also where I keep my rooted book. Some of you are in rooted studies, if you're not in a rooted group, you can, you know, get a devotional book. I find those really helpful because they keep me on track reading God's word. I consistently want to hear God's voice. His voice is the one I want to pay attention to the most. I also lis listen to God's people and um, compare what they say to me with scripture you know, sometimes we're afraid to let other people speak for God because maybe um, we've heard things that have, they've, they've not been true or they've led us astray. So I usually just, you know, if, if someone tells me something that they say is from God, I'll, I'll see, does it match up with scripture? Is it, does it match with something I say here? But God has used other people to speak to me many times in my life. He's used Pastor Bob He's spoken to me through, through Ben and, and Alexi in, in worship. God has even spoken to me through my kids. God can use anyone in your life. Just you want to compare what they say with what we know he's saying here in Scripture. Pay attention to who you pay attention to. Now, each new year, um, I'm not into New Year's resolutions, but each new year I pick a word a word that I'm going to kind of have guide me throughout the year. And it's something I pray about. And sometimes I feel like God puts a word in my mind or in my heart, and I, I choose that as my word. So a few years ago, I, I felt that God was telling me that my word for the year was going to be 
silent. Silent. That was going to be my theme word for the year. I did not like that word. I am rarely silent. Silence is really uncomfortable. How is that a theme for the year? Now, have you ever noticed, though, that the letters in the word silent are the exact same letters as the word listen? Go ahead. You're, you're figuring it out in your brain right now. Go ahead. You know, listen and silent, the exact same letters. It's hard to listen if we're never silent. Right? It's hard to listen if we're never silent. When I go on those walks with my husband, I am not listening if I'm the one always talking. If I want to hear what my husband is saying, I have to be silent and listen. If we want to hear God's voice, sometimes we have to be silent. If we want to hear God speak, sometimes you need to be silent. If we go back to the, the passage in 1 Samuel, Eli instructed Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And Samuel went back to his bed and laid there silently listening for God. Eli instructed Samuel, go and lie down, right? Then the Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, during that year of silence, you might wonder, well, what did that mean for my life? Um, I did not spend the year being silent. I don't know if I could spend a whole day being silent. Maybe, well, maybe a day. Definitely not a week. Definitely not a year. But I did do one thing differently. And I did this one thing every single day. That was my way of kind of, of, of obeying God, telling me that this was to be a year of silence. Every time I would get in my car, I would resist the urge to turn on the radio. Literally, there were so many days that I would like physically <laughs> pull my hand back. And I would just sit there in my car ride for the day, or car rides for the day, silent. And I would start my ride by saying, Lord, I, I want to hear from you. Speak. I'm listening. I think I grew in my relationship with God that year more than I had ever before. It was a, a great year of training my ears to hear God's voice and getting myself in a habit of making space to hear from him. Most of us lack silence in our lives. If we want to hear God speak, sometimes we need to be silent. Hearing from God starts with believing he can speak. Then we need to pay attention to what we pay attention to because we hear most clearly the voices we're most familiar with. We can train our ears to hear God's voice by reading his word, listening to people who follow him, and looking to see where he's at work in our circumstances. We can also hear God speak when we spend enough time in silence that we can hear him above all the other voices in our lives. Now, several years ago, God spoke something to me in a moment of silence that made no sense. It would happen whenever I was with my very close friend and former student, Carolyn. Now, she wasn't the most talkative person, and we'd spend a good amount of time together just being in silence. Now, you know that's a really special relationship when you can be with someone and it's silent and it's okay, right? That's like a really special. Well, every time I was with Caroline in one of these silent times, I felt God saying the same thing to me. Two words that didn't make 
any sense. Hold her. Now, I thought that was really kind of weird. Carolyn was a, a grown woman. Hug her, sure, that would be normal. But hold her, like for any kind of sustained amount of time, that would just be really awkward for both of us. Let's just be honest. But I kept hearing these two words every time. In my mind, not out loud, but in my mind, hold her. In my mind, every time Carolyn and I were together in silence. I mean, it happened so much, it was really starting to make me kind of crazy. I thought, am I losing my mind? Well, after weeks of this, Carolyn and I were out of town together with a group of people on a college retreat. Now, back when Carolyn was 15 years old, she had experienced one of the most difficult things a person can ever go through. When she was just 15 years old, her mother lost a long, hard battle with cancer, and Carolyn lost her mom. She rarely talked about this tragedy. She just buried the pain for literally years. Some of us can relate to that, can't we? She's kept it all inside. Well, that weekend on the retreat, Carolyn opened up to me about her mother and how it made, how losing her mother made her feel about God. She missed her mother so much, it physically hurt her. Like she would have chest pain, it hurt so bad. She said she knew God loved her in her head, but she didn't feel it in her heart. She regularly read her Bible and prayed every day, but she still didn't feel God. What she wanted more than anything was to feel God hold her. Hold her. That's literally what she said. And all of a sudden, everything that God had been saying to me for weeks made sense. So I just kind of reached my arms around her to hug her, and, and I just didn't let go for a really long, uncomfortable amount of time. And she just cried in my arms. And she felt God hold her th through me. It, it was a miraculous answer to Carolyn's prayer. And I could have missed it if I hadn't been listening and had the courage to believe that God can speak if I hadn't paid attention to what I was paying attention to. God has such important, life-changing things to say to us if we will just pay attention to what we're paying attention to, give attention to his word and to his people, and make space to be silent, choosing to listen. Turn off the car radio and pray. Take out the AirPods and just listen. Put the phone in the bathroom <laughs> and get an alarm clock if you need to, but make space to listen to God. Tell him you're listening, you want to hear from him. And then act on that still small voice in your head that you're sure is your imagination, but if it lines up with scripture and the character of God, you just might be the answer to someone else's prayer that they have been praying for years. I'm gonna ask the worship team to come out and we're actually gonna spend some time being quiet, listening for God. Instead of me praying a long prayer over you, 
which I will do silently from over there, I just want to create some space for us to listen and hear what God might say. Now, I wanna just say that if during this time of reflection and listening, you don't hear God, it does not mean there's something wrong with you. It does not mean that God doesn't love you. Listening takes practice, right? Listening takes practice. So we're gonna practice sitting quietly, silently, listening for God. We're gonna choose to believe that God can speak. And when, your mind, when our minds wander, we're gonna pay attention. Oh, where's our mind going? And try to bring it back. God, we wanna pay attention to you, okay? And we're gonna let God speak. Let's all close our eyes and enjoy some time of just quiet listening. Lord, your servants, we are listening. Speak to us, Lord. <laughs> 